Say what's going on out there, YouTube? It's your boy 16 to life, and I'm back like I'm on a pro violation. Yard down. So you already know today we're gonna hop into another free game Friday. And the last free game Friday, when I was discussing the youngster Leonard Kemp Jr., who at the age of 15 had shot somebody in the shoulder, they tried him as an adult and gave him 33 years to life. I gave y'all the wrong information on on, on um going to the site so the name of the site is lockedin.info and so I, the spelling is l-o-c-k-e-d-i-n.info so if you get a chance and you're interested look that up man and you may want to send a letter or something to the district attorney and which we, we're trying to get the his sentence changed you know what i'm saying his sentence changed and other people in a position like him juveniles who was tried as an adult and so okay also that that uh, that leads me into the uh my next little thing that I want to discuss in in the comments, somebody had a uh, somebody had mentioned my boy Stutterbox, who I was telling y'all when we was in the county jail together, we got into a, um, a riot with the Pisces. I guess the brother that I was talking to, he had grew up with him and he was in contact with him and looking out for him and this and that. So I asked him, I said, "Hey man, do you know where he at? And uh, is he coming home anytime soon?" Because I was under the impression he had got sentenced to twenty five years to life. But he told me, no, he said he, he he knew where he was at. And he also told me, no, he said, man, they gave him life without parole. And when he said that, to be honest, it just really, the effect on me was extremely different because, you know, at one point in time, they uh, when I was initially arrested, they was talking about giving me life without parole. And just to also to know that I was with this dude, we was, we was in the county jail together and he wasn't nothing but about 20, 21 years old. And his his charges were similar to mine. That was the thing that really that really affected me the most. His 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 charges were similar to mine. You know what I'm saying? Actually, he had less charges than I had. You know, and uh, everybody's asking, what did I go to jail for? I went to jail for several shootings, and I'll talk about them a little later. But anyway, he had less than I had in terms of of, of cases. You know what I'm saying? And he ended up with life without parole. So it just made me feel extremely blessed. It made me feel extremely lucky, and also made me feel sad. For him, you know, knowing that man, you know, he he threw his life away. You know what I'm saying? And and I think that sometimes when we out here, when when he, when we are in the streets and we young, we feel invincible. Like can't nothing happen to us. You know that regardless of what we do, we gonna always get caught. I mean, excuse me, we gonna always get away. And we we ain't gonna never get caught. And I can tell you from experience that when you out here in the street, the more you do, the more your name becomes rank. You, the more your name starts ringing in the streets, people in your circle become a little fear they become a little fearful of you you know what i'm saying they stop wanting to hang out with you as much you know what i'm saying they start you know because now they 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 seeing you as somebody else different you know what i'm saying and you never know who starts giving the police information about you and all that type of stuff you know it just it just it's not this shit is not like it doesn't go the way we think it's gonna go you know what i'm saying we always think we can get away i remember one time my pops he told me you know now before i became 18 my dad was trying to get me off the block you know he'd come up there looking for me and trying to chase me off the block but once i once i became 18 only thing he told me was be careful you know what i'm saying and i remember one day him telling me you know be careful he said because they giving they giving life for people who are getting convicted of murder and i told him oh don't worry dad i ain't i ain't gonna get caught because when we're young and we're doing things and we get away with them, now we have a tendency to believe that we always going to be able to get get away with them. And like I said, you can run around, you can shoot the town up, man. You can do this shit for two, three years. But only time they got to catch you is one time. And once they catch you that one time, it's curtains, you know. So we also got to be mindful of that, man. And somebody had asked me in the comments, what was one of the worst things you experienced in prison? And and for me, uh, luckily I was I was blessed with a, I was blessed with a good personality. Like the way y'all see me on here in person, I'm ten times more. You know, everything is funny to me, man. I I see I see life in a in in, in like a real you know a lot of comedy. You know, I always I always find things to laugh at. So, but so having a bless you know having that personality made it easier for me to uh to do my time. And then also I felt that going to prison was an extension of the street. So I accepted it because I knew it came with the territory. You know what I'm saying? So th that's another thing that helped me. To, to get through the time but one of the things that was always hard is when i went on visits and what was hard for is not it wasn't necessarily hard for me per se but it was just the realization of what i was doing you know when like when i when i would go on visits 
you know, especially just wit witnessing other people's families. They would come through there. They'd be so happy, so excited to see their loved ones, you know, whether it was mothers, brothers, fathers, you know, sisters. They'd come in here. Sometimes them and both the convict or the prisoner they was visiting, they'd both be crying. These would be like tough dudes you'd see on the yard walking around, gang banging and doing their shit, fighting and squabbing. But when they hit that visiting room, man, it's, it's, it's extremely different, you know, and it made me realize the effect that I was having on my family, you know, um, the pain and hurt that I was putting them through. And especially when it was time to leave, especially when it was time to leave, man, you'd have people in there, the little kids and the brothers, they'd be crying and not wanting to go, not wanting to leave their loved one in there, you know, not knowing when they would see them again. Sometimes some people may have not seen their family for years, man, five, six, seven, eight years, you know what I'm saying, depending on where you might be incarcerated at. They may send you to a prison that's nine, 10 hours away and your family don't have the means to come see you. And so when, when my family would come see me, you know, when they would leave, you know, they would just be so sad. And it, would, it made me realize the pain that I also caused my family. You know, when we out here in the streets and we, and we doing what we doing, sometimes we have the intention to hurt others, but we don't realize in the midst of trying to hurt others, we also, we also hurting our, uh, we also hurting our family, you know, you know, the shame we may cause, you know, uh, you know, our moms didn't raise us up to be like this. So imagine the shame, you know, your mom may have walking around now having to d deal with the fact everybody, you know, her son is in jail for these negative things. You know, and people is looking at her, you know, and she may be feeling there's something that she could have done better. When in reality, it was nothing because the decision we made was a decision that we made. But these are things that we don't think about. You know, we don't think about the pain and the anguish we're sending our own loved ones through, you know. So when it comes to going to jail, I would never, for that and a few other reasons, I would never wish jail on anybody, you know, regardless of color, regardless of, of race, regardless of what uh, what hood they bang, where they was from, what, what they was affiliated to, you know, prison is just, man, it's horrible, you know what I'm saying? And so that's something that we got to we gotta keep our mind on. One last topic I want to hop on to is, I notice nowadays it seems like it's cool, man, for youngsters to be out in the street high on drugs, you know, and... When I was growing up, being in the, being in the, in the streets, especially in the hood, hanging out, doing whatever we was doing, that was a uh, that was a a giant no no. You know, our big homies would not allow us to be out there high on any type of drugs and drunk. You know, to the point where we can't move, we can't think because that you know. And a lot of people think that they can, they think that they react better when they high and they on and, and they on drugs and this and that. But the, the, but the reality is, you moving much slower. You thinking, you know, you thinking much slower. Your thought process is not as sharp as it would be had would you be clear-headed and you know that that one split second may cause you to lose your life or it could cause you to overreact in a situation where you normally wouldn't react like that and do something that's going to land you in the penitentiary for the next 15 20 years you know so i'm not knocking anybody that want to get high if that's your thing do your thing man i'm just saying that we need to think and be wiser you know on 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 about where we choose to get high at you know what i'm saying because like i say if you out there and you in the hood it's a lot of shit going on man you got to be alert you can't be alert when you out there high drugged up you know drunk sloppy drunk you know you thinking that you lit you thinking that you on one but really you can't think you know what i'm saying so that's just a little game man i'm trying to give y'all it's gonna always be people that still gonna be in the street it's always gonna be people that that you know regardless of, of where the information is coming from, they're going to be in the street. They feel that's the best option for them. So I'm just saying that the utilization of information is always important, man. When you hear something that may possibly make you more successful or make make you um, last in whatever field you're doing, man, it's only common sense to take it. And uh, I honestly believe that's one of the reasons that, you know, I survived the things that I survived through. Because when I would hear some somebody say something that sound like it could it could be beneficial, I, I take it to heart. I wouldn't just hear it in one ear and let it go out the other ear. Man, I, I would use it. I would, you know, I would do what I heard and I would I would apply it in certain situations, man. And I honestly believe it, it helped me get to the it helped me get through the penitentiary. It helped me survive in the streets and in a whole lot of situations, man. So now I'm back just trying to, you know, trying to pass some of this game forward, man. Like I say, the, the ultimate goal is to get up out the street, you know. But I know that's not always I know that's not always going to happen for everybody, man. So hopefully y'all will pay attention to a little bit of that. Stay safe, man, you know, and uh, y'all resume normal program.